You've tried eye drops, warming masks, lid wipes, omega-3s. 30% well, of people that have dry eye disease, these aren't enough and you need something more. Okay, so in this short video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about radio frequency, how it works, who it's for, does it even work? And as you know, it can be absolutely miserable to have dry eye. But what's worse is that dry eye never gets better on its own. And if you don't do something to actively treat your dry eye disease, it can become much worse and become permanent. But first, let's talk about how this feels when it's done and does it hurt. So I want you to think of radio frequency as a hot stone massage for your eyes. So when you arrive for your appointment, the ocular hygienist is gonna first clean your eyelids and around your eyes. Lid hygiene is an important part for treating dry eye because there's organisms that normally live on our eyelids. They can produce inflammatory waste products that accumulate on the surface of the lid and fall into your tears and onto the surface of your eye. And those inflammatory products can contribute to dry eye. They disrupt the tear film, cause it to evaporate off faster, and they can make your dry eye symptoms even worse. Next, the ocular hygienist will put some ultrasonic gel onto your eyelids to reduce the friction from the probe that's gliding over your eyelids. Now, because this gel is inert, if you happen to open your eyes or if you get any in your eyes, it's not gonna irritate or sting or burn in any way. And then the ocular hygienist is gonna gently glide that probe around your upper and lower lids and around the areas around your eye to heat up that tissue. Now the probe that you use has a temperature gauge on it that measures the temperature of the device about a thousand times every second. So this device is extremely precise in the temperature that it sets and it has a maximum temperature that it can be set at. Usually the target range that the doctor is aiming for is somewhere between 40 and 43 degrees Celsius. Then that's gonna be the optimal temperature to treat your dry eye disease. And because it has a maximum temperature, it can never get hot enough to burn or cause any injury to your eyelid or the skin. Now this treatment's gonna take about five to seven minutes per eye to perform. And when it's done, the ocular hygienist is gonna remove the gel and then the doctor may gently squeeze the glands of your lids to try to get those oils to express out and start them flowing again. There's really no downtime after the procedure. Your lids might feel a little bit warm, maybe a little bit red for a few minutes, but you can resume your normal activities, wear your makeup, and carry on things just as normal immediately after the treatment. So I'm gonna talk about is this treatment actually safe, but make sure you stay to the end of this video because at the end, I'm gonna be talking about a secret benefit of this treatment that you don't wanna miss out on. So how do you know if RF is gonna be right for you? Well, if you have a particular type of dry eye called malbomian gland dysfunction, which is the most common type of dry eye, then radio frequency is a great option for you. Because the problem with malbomian gland dysfunction is the glands in the lid called the malbomian glands are either blocked or inflamed. And if they're blocked, we need to get them unblocked. And the, one of the best ways to get them unblocked is heat up the oils to soften them so they can start to flow better. Now likely if you've been diagnosed with dry eye disease with your eye doctor, they probably would have recommended some type of warming mask to heat up your lids. And you're going, well, how is this any different than that? Well, the warming masks are a great option and I definitely still recommend them to my patients for at-home treatment and they're good for mild cases of dry eye disease. So the problem with the heating mask is you have to take that mask and then you gotta heat it up in the microwave and you gotta be careful that you don't heat it up too hot because if you heat it up too hot, these could burn your skin. And then what you have to do is you have to take that and apply it to your lids and the heat from the mask is gonna transfer from the outer part of the lid to the inner dermis and then to the gland. So it has to heat up from the outside in and transfer that heat. And that takes a little bit of time to do. And that's why you need to do these masks for a significant amount of time because those glands need to be at the target temperature, which is somewhere between 40 and 43 degrees Celsius for five to 10 minutes in order to get an effective treatment. So it takes a number of minutes for this to transfer through the lid. So that means you're gonna probably have to do this mask for 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And even then you might be, have to be heating up this mask over and over again. So the mask can be somewhat effective, but not ideal. Now the unique and really great thing about RF is that RF 
heats the glands from the inside out. So basically, on the probe, there's a couple of a little plates and each plate emits a radio wave and those radio waves will transfer into lids. They will start heating glands from the inside out. And so this probe doesn't get warm, but it warms up the lids very, very precisely. It gets the right temperature in the exact right spot for the exact amount of time, which means it's much much more therapeutic. But you're probably thinking, well, I've been told to do these masks and heat my lids every single day. How am I gonna get this treatment done, which is done only in your eye doctor's office? How, do I have to go there every day to get this treatment done? Well, and the great news is you don't. And the reason why is because of the efficiency and the preciseness of this treatment, it's much, much more effective. So oftentimes there will be a baseline number of treatments, which is usually three to five treatments spaced out a few weeks apart. And once you have that, then it maintains those results for a long enough time that you may only need one treatment every six to 12 months after that, just as maintenance. Now, now people are always a little bit concerned about safety of these procedures. You've probably never heard of RF. Is it even legit? But let me tell you, RF is nothing new. RF has been done in the aesthetics and the dermatology world for years. In fact, this is what they use to treat fine lines and superficial wrinkles if you go to the dermatologist. It's been used safely, and in fact, that's how they found out that this works for dry eye disease. They were treating patients trying to look their skin look better, get rid of some of those fine lines and wrinkles at the dermatologist, and these patients were noticing that their dry eye was improving. And so the effects that were carrying out on the skin were carrying over to their eyelids. And so this device has been adapted to specifically treat the eyelids to target it even better. And so the bonus side effect that you get with radio frequency is it will also treat some of the superficial fine line and wrinkles that have that it may have developed around on your eyelids. And by tightening up the lids, that also improves the lid function, provides a better blink and better pumping of the oils from the glands to produce a better quality tear. But some people are thinking, well, is this treatment even for me at all? My dry eye isn't that bad. Well, like I mentioned, a lot of people can manage their dry eye symptoms with the at-home treatments, but anyone can benefit from radio frequency, even if you have mild dry eye disease. And this is just a more effective treatment that can minimize how much of the at-home treatments that you're gonna to have to use and make your results much, much better. So anyone can have this treatment, even with mild dry eye disease, and it can make an improvement for everyone. Now, it may not be a cure that you're getting rid of everything that you're using, but what it's gonna do is gonna improve your symptoms such that you can either maintain what your at-home treatment that you're doing and have better symptoms, or maybe cut out some of the at-home treatments, make it a little bit easier, and still have improved symptoms. But it's not the only treatment that you can get to treat your dry eye disease. There's a bunch of other treatments. If you want to learn a little bit more about those, then you should be watching this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.